Franco Island is, to me, one of my favorite spots in the world, in spite of its bleakness and grayness and wildness, and partly, I think, because of its remoteness. It's at the edge of the world, in the way. It's at the edge of the continental shelf, over 40 miles off the northern end of Vancouver Island. A man really can only be a visitor there. It really is where nature has its sway, not man, one of the few places in the world where that's true. Man tried to dominate Triangle Island and lost. People tried to live there in a lighthouse in the early 1900s, but uh, the structures are blowing off. The winds can reach over 200 kilometers an hour. Man just really didn't try to adapt to Triangle Island. He tried to get Triangle Island to adapt to him. Bristol Foster is head of British Columbia's Ecological Reserves Program. His job is to find places where we can still learn from nature and help save them. Triangle Island is such a place. And Foster has come here to study the precarious cycles of life unique to the island. To me, oyster catchers are really the most characteristic bird of the Pacific coast. They make a very small shell nest and lay two or three eggs and defend them hotly from the, the gulls, which are always on watch for an easy meal. And I like talking back to them, my own whistles. I guess I feel maybe for a brief moment that I'm an oyster catcher myself, or at least I'm maybe a bit more of the environment than simply a human being walking along the beach. When one arrives at the island in the daytime, one does not see most of the birds that live here on the island. There are far more seabirds living on Triangle Island than any other single spot in British Columbia, close to a million. There are over 360,000 pairs of cast moccasins and 16,000 pairs of rhinoceros auklets, and they are all nocturnal, and they all nest underground. Most of the island is riddled with the holes of cast auklets. This huge colony is like a city. Life coming and going, things well adapted to their environment. Each is specialized by dividing up the the food resource and the nesting habitat to maximize their efficiency. Each is a specialist, rather like a, a butcher and a logger and a banker. There are 25,000 pairs of puffins, about 3,000 common mures, pairs, and a few petrels, uh, maybe 300 gulls, and a couple of hundred cormorants. The cormorants, mirrors, and puffins are the biggest of the seabirds nesting here, and they have some difficulty taking off being so large, and it's certainly very handy for them to have a cliff to simply throw themselves off of. a swing gull chick, just hatching. In a few minutes it'll dry out and all fluff up and look entirely different. Gull chicks are one of the favorite foods of passing eagles. Anytime an eagle comes nearby there's always a raucous clamor as the gulls take off to try to chase it away. But a determined eagle can easily outfly the gulls and take chicks almost at its choosing. The peregrine falcon is one of the most marvelous 
avian flyers in the world being able to fly over 200 kilometers per hour. They try to catch the seabirds as they fly in and out to their burrows. And they always kill on the wing. I guess there'll probably be three or four Iries on this island. Though, again, it, it's kind of hard to determine because they can be kind of sneaky. They can be seeming to defend a cliff and make a lot of noise at a cliff, and the next day they're not there at all. The Muir is only found in any numbers in Triangle Island and nowhere else in the province. A few years ago, when one plane made one passage over the Muir colony, they nest in the open, not in holes, and the entire nesting for that season was destroyed by the pandemonium caused by the passing of the plane overhead. Triangle Island is protected as an ecological reserve. The land is protected, the vegetation, and the seabirds while they're on it. But the seabirds are not always on Triangle Island. Of course, they have to go far off to feed, and there's no way we can protect the ocean, unfortunately. We'd like to make it an ecological reserve, too, and lay down laws for super tankers, but we can't do it. All we can do is protect the land mass down to the mean high tide mark and hope that when a super tanker cracks up, it's nowhere near our ecological reserve. it interesting to contemplate that really all of this huge clock is wound up by the sun. It's the sun coming over the horizon every day that gets the little plankton going in the ocean, that feeds the larger plankton, that feeds the smaller fish, that feeds the larger fish, all of which feed the seabirds. Seabirds are occasionally caught by things as eagles and peregrine falcons, so they too are really feeding off the sun, where the energy all began. In these pools, there is a, an incredible multitude of life, which uses every conceivable niche possible. Starfish are carnivores, and they creep along the ocean floor. When it crawls on top of a, a mussel, it everts its stomach so it can surround the muscle and it can digest the contents of the muscle outside of itself. Man is dependent on his total environment for survival. Seems like a suicide for the human race not to look after the sea above all because it covers three quarters of the Earth's surface. amazing to think that it wasn't that many years ago that sea lion colonies were used for target practice by our CAF bombers, that federal fisheries used to shoot the sea lions, all in the thought that the sea lions took an inordinate amount of salmon away from the fishermen. Of course, they do take some salmon, and they live largely on rock cod, and I think there should be some fish, even salmon, left over for the sea lions.
hard to say why this spot here was singled out to have babies by the sea lions, perhaps because it's so remote. It's one of the largest rookeries in the province, one of the few places where they actually give birth. Huge mothers and even huger bull sea lions tromping around quite often kill the baby sea lions. So there is great infant mortality. And this is undoubtedly one reason why sea lions have not increased so much, because they have to use these tiny remote islands for giving birth. And this perhaps crowds them to the extent that there is more trampling of young. Ecological reserves are part of a world movement to try to set aside natural areas for research purposes and education purposes. Really, what we're trying to do is to preserve the option for the future so that our children, grandchildren, and so on will be able to go to natural areas and learn from them to better adjust our civilization to the environment that we must adjust to. Really, we're simply trying to keep the option open for the future. Thank you.